So, June, you were born in East London. I was. Um, your parents were from Ghana. Yeah. And you broke into broadcasting at the age of just 16, yes. Kiss FM. Yeah. It's really young. Mm. Do you remember what it was like as a young woman working in, in the media? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, like you said, I started when I was 16. Um, and it was a time when Kiss FM had just become uh, legal. Uh, so it was uh, a, a pirate radio station first. Then they got their uh, license. And so it was a crazy time in the company's history. It's now very sort of corporate and structured now. But then it was rock and roll and madness and, you know, Ibiza parties and all sorts. Um, and, um, you know, drugs and debauchery. I think we got a couple Ibiza. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple. Um, and uh, drugs and debauchery everywhere. And the thing, what was interesting was even though I was 16, I knew that that wasn't for me per se. And I think that that was down to the fact that I started um, meditation and mindfulness at a very young age because I was hit by a car when I was 14, uh, which meant that I didn't walk for a year and a half. And I was in a hospital bed for a very long period of time. And in that time to get through, I started meditating because that was the only thing that could keep me calm, especially because I was dealing with a lot of physical pain as well. Um, and I do think that that almost prepared me and saved me from what I would have for sure gotten into had I not had that, particularly starting in this industry at such a young age. So, yeah. Definitely. So for, for young people today, what do you think are the challenges that they face in order to stay mentally well? Yeah, well, there's all sorts of challenges that were not around when I was, you know, a teenager in that because of social media, because of the images, because it's a constant onslaught of what you're supposed to look like, who you're supposed to be, the kind of life you're supposed to have. And the, 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 the truth is the vast majority of people don't have that, and the vast majority are not that. So if you're not that, straight away you are instantly made to feel less than. And I think for parents it can be very hard to create a counter-narrative when every day young people, particularly young women, uh, are being bombarded with images that, you know, they're not pretty enough, you know, not thin enough, not whatever enough. So it's tough. And what do you think, what do you think youngsters could do? Well, this is where I do think the stuff that you're doing matters because I think if we teach young people and we give them the tools to almost take control of their own minds and to learn tools that help them to feel better, not necessarily with medication because I think what happens is a lot of the time we don't intervene early enough. So we get to the point where people need med um, medication when actually if we gave people mindfulness tools earlier, it wouldn't get to that stage. So yeah, I think it's really important. The earlier you can start this stuff with your kids, the better. And I'm so with you in the sort of the prevention more than, than cure yeah. in every regard, which is yes. the whole idea behind everyone should be in therapy before yeah. any issues before come crop up. <laughs> so you very, very eloquently and vitally point out that a lot of groups in society are marginalized. Mm. Do you think people with mental health issues are still marginalized today? Oh, for sure. And then how? And Oh, and yeah. Then, There's yeah. so much stigma attached yeah. to it. I mean, thank goodness we're now getting to a stage where we are having this conversation and, you know, the work that people like Prince Harry and Prince William are doing or even Freddie Flintoff in terms of helping uh, men uh, voice their vulnerabilities. I think... Um, we are now at least beginning to have the conversation in public, but still there's a lot of stigma. I mean, most people wouldn't feel comfortable actually you know, informing their employers that they have a mental illness, and rightfully so, because even if you're not saying it, most people, most employers will penalise you for it. And I think it's about being honest and getting to a place where we understand what mental illness is and the various forms of mental illness and that how that plays out and how that impacts uh, employees in the workplace. And therefore, I think when we have better education and better understanding, then we will have less stigma. But it's back to your prevention piece. That's the most important piece in all of this. Talk to me a little bit about your desire to campaign for change because yeah. that's strong within you. Who inspires you? Yeah, well, I think who inspires me is, you know, like what you were saying is actually having had therapy multiple times myself. Um, and I found it so helpful. You know, I'm one of those 
ridiculously obsessive people that sort of like once I start sort of try everything and literally I took two years off work and <laughs> tried every therapy style <laughs> every retreat you name it I was there it was ridiculous um, and so and I found it so helpful and I think actually sometimes when you're going through different things in life you need different types of therapy and I think that's the other thing I don't think people understand that there are multiple types of therapy it's not only one style of therapy so if you meet a therapist that you don't connect with or a style of therapy that you don't connect with experiment try different things you will find the one that actually works for you in your book you do talk about having experienced anxiety in yeah. the past yeah um what do you do today besides meditation to to keep yourself to to look after yourself yeah. and to unwind even. Yeah, for sure. Well, I pray. And I know that, you know, a lot of people sort of poo-poo praying, but I think prayer works. So I actually integrate prayer with my meditation. And I try to do it every morning. I try to do 20 minutes in the morning before I start my day. And I honestly see the difference when I don't do it. Um, and it really does help because, you know, for a few years ago, for I went through a terrible time in life. And if I hadn't have had that practice, I don't think I'd be able to be sat here with you today functioning. No way. Because, you know, when you're going through a dark time, you don't think you will ever get through it. And that's the reason why this stuff matters, because it actually does give you the tools to get through it, to get through some very tough stuff. That's great. And mm. uh, everyone take note. Please, all of you, do not forget to foster self-care. It's so important. It's the pinnacle of our well-being and the basis of being able to give back to, to others as well. It's really just left for me to thank you all very much for coming out for this special cause. Brilliant. Thank you. Aww.